And now I have the distinct and special honor to introduce Governor Andrew Cuomo to the stage to introduce Matilda Rafa Cuomo, but let me say a few words first. This morning, as I noted, we have the pleasure of introducing someone who's been fighting the good battle for gender equality and a better future for women and all New Yorkers, Governor Andrew Cuomo. He has made advancing gender equality one of his top priorities. From fighting for women's reproductive rights and guaranteeing access to reproductive health care, to passing paid family leave, to working to eliminate the wage gap, this governor is being an ally in the fight for gender equality. He has raised the minimum wage to $15 an hour and passed legislation in the country to prevent sexual assault on college campuses. Earlier this year, Governor Cuomo announced the launch, yes, And shout outs for that raise in the minimum wage as well. <laughs> Governor Cuomo announced the launch of the first ever New York State Council on Women and Girls, which is making sure that every policy enacted and each program created takes into account the experiences of women and girls and tries to further advance equality in our state. We at the Hall thank him for the state's partnership in helping to transform the historic Seneca Knitting Mill. New York State committed nearly $4 million in grants to help restore the building and turn it into the beautiful new home that we were celebrating just a while ago. We have a strong voice and champion for Restore New York, for developing the state and developing some of our towns in the area and in the national and he's a national champion. He doesn't just talk about it. I ask Governor Cuomo to come up now to give us his opening remarks and to introduce his mother, Matilda Rafa Cuomo, who's being inducted into the hall today. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. This one good? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, first to Betty Bear and Eileen Hartman. Let's give them a great round of applause for organizing this fantastic event. To all our inductees, what an impressive group, aren't they? Let's give them a round of applause. We have a lot of distinguished people in the room, but we have Gloria Steinem, who has been such a pioneer in this movement. Let's give her a round of applause and thank her for all she dealt. Humble, too. <laughs> what a really impressive group of inductees. When you look at the breadth of accomplishment that they have, it really is extraordinary. Uh, and it's my honor to be here to be part of this ceremony. It's a special honor to uh, be part of this ceremony when my mother is one of the inductees. So I'm wearing two hats. Uh, the governor hat and uh, the son hat, but primarily the son hat. Uh, Matilda Rafa Cuomo has five children. Uh, my sister Madeline, who is a lawyer and a mother. My sister Maria, who is a filmmaker, runs a not-for-profit that helps the homeless and is a mother. Uh, my sister Margaret, who is the oldest, although she doesn't like to admit it and doesn't like when I say it, but I said it, so it's a little late, but you are either the oldest chronologically or you are not. It's a matter of math, so it's not really. Uh, I now look older than she is, but it wasn't always that way. It's this job that did it, actually. I looked 22 before I became governor. But Margaret is, uh, the, is a doctor and a mother. Uh, and you know the story about the mother who had uh, a daughter who was a doctor. 
mother has two children, a daughter and a son, and the daughter becomes a doctor. And the mother's so proud of the daughter who became the doctor because the doctor is the position of respect and she became a doctor. The son is in politics and she has no respect for politics and she tries to be nice about it but she winds up communicating it and the son is always trying harder and harder and harder because he wants to get that affirmation that the daughter, the doctor has and he runs for one office and he wins and then he runs for another office, he wins and then becomes a senator and then he runs for president of the United States and he wins. And he calls up his mom, he says, Mom, I won, I'm gonna be the President of the United States, I want you to come down to Washington, see me sworn in, your son, the President of the United States. The mother says, okay. Comes down to Washington, she's in the front row, the President-elect walks out on the stage, uh, he's about to be sworn in, and the mother nudges the person next to her and says, see that boy on the stage? That's my son. He says, very nice, you know. His sister's a doctor. <laughs> so, but we are not a competitive family. No, 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 no. We are just easy going. My brother Christopher is not here today. He's the only member of the family who's not here. He said he had to uh, work out on Saturday is what he said. I didn't think it was a good excuse. I said, Mom, now you know who loves you more. <laughs> and it's not Chris. I'm my mother's favorite. She told me that I'm her favorite. She told me not to tell the others, but I think they should know anyway, just as a matter of honesty. So I am my mother's favorite. My mother did it all. She raised five kids. She raised five kids basically on her own. My father was always busy doing uh, what, he, what he was passionate about. She did it with no help. These were five kids besides me. They all brought their own difficulties. And uh, she was a phenomenal mother. She was also, uh, as a professional, outstanding. She worked with the UN Council on Children. She ran the New York State Commission on Children. And in 1984, she found her passion, which was mentoring, which was providing the support services for young people who really didn't have that base of support and using mentoring as a vehicle to do it. She started a program in New York State uh, it is still her passion. She does it still. Over 10,000 children have been mentored by the program that she's run. To give you a sense of the person she is, we spent last weekend uh, together. I was alone because my kids are now grown and gone. So I said, Mom, why don't you come over for the weekend? And we, we just hung around for the weekend. And I said to her, look, these are your golden years. What do you want to do? You want to get a new apartment? You want to travel? You want to get a summer house. She said, no, 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 I have much too much work to do with mentoring. There are too many children who need help for me to do anything else. Uh, and that's at the stage of life that she's in now. It has been a family mission of the Cuomos uh, to be champions of women's rights. Uh, we have 14 grandchildren in my mother's family. 13 of the 14 are girls, okay? Now, that is statistically impossible. So I believe that was God's way of saying, I really want you to focus on women's issues. And in case you forget, I'm going to send you 13 out of 14. Um, and we have been uh, from the, from the get-go. My father was a great champion and a pioneer of, human, of women's rights. Uh, I have followed the same course. I'm proud, as you heard from Betty, of the record that we've established. We've done more for women's rights in this state than any state in the United States of America, and I'm very proud of that. So many issues that had to be done for years. 
uh, that hadn't been done with the most aggressive state in protecting victims of domestic violence. We have the best paid family leave program in the United States. We have the highest goal for minority and women-owned businesses and state contracts. We have the best breast cancer protection program in the United States where there is now no copay or deductible for any breast exam and we have offices open after five o'clock on, on weekends. So the, we call it the no excuses campaign. And we passed the best sexual assault on campus. That was a scourge that has been going on for decades and schools were more concerned with their reputation than the rights of the woman who was abused. And that stops and that stops now. And in terms of breaking the glass ceiling and leadership and women in positions of leadership, which I think is the next frontier, my father appointed the first female to our state's highest court, the Court of Appeals. I appointed the second. Uh, we now have Janet De Fiore as the chief judge of the Court of Appeals. We have a female chancellor of the state university system. And I just appointed the first secretary to the governor in history, who's a woman, Melissa DeRosa, who's here today with us. And last point, I just want to say this. This is an important time because uh, from Washington, there are real challenges to women's rights and the role of women in society. I tried to pass two years ago in New York a constitutional amendment to Roe v. Wade in the state constitution, where we'd have the Roe v. Wade protection in the state constitution. And I failed because the legislature said it's inconceivable that anyone would go to roll back Roe v. Wade. That was two years ago. It was inconceivable. Well, today it's the reality. And they are trying to do it, and it's wrong. And if Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott were here today, they would say, ladies, it is the time to stand up and organize and mobilize and make your voice heard. And to my mother, I say this. There's an Italian expression that says, the two things in life that will never leave you, the eye of God and the love of a mother. And it is so true. And on behalf of all the kids, Mom, we are proud of everything that you've accomplished. We're inspired by what you do for other people. We're grateful for what you have done for us. But we love you for who you are. Congratulations. And now, please join me, um, Matilda Rafa Cuomo. The Hall takes great pride in inducting you to National Women's Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just as surprised as all of you folks that my son is here, the governor. <laughs> thank you, thank you, governor. I love to say that. <laughs> I want to thank everybody who's here today. It's so wonderful and a wonderful introduction. 
Thank you for the members of the National Women's Hall of Fame for this prestigious honor and to many friends and family that are here today to celebrate this special occasion. Special thanks to the National Women's Hall of Fame co-presidents, Betty Bayer and Eileen Hartman, and especially to Pat Alness, who works very hard, and my wonderful ambassador, Marilyn Bayer, Barrow, Barrow, and her husband, Jim. So wonderful. It, they made things so terrific, very easy. And all the dedicated team that continue this important legacy and future for future generations. It's truly an honor to, to be among my fellow inductees. You are my heroes. I can't tell you, these are special ladies. I could stay here all week and listen to every one of them again and again. They're wonderful. We're fortunate to have them. I want to express my sincere appreciation to my dear friend Frank DiBerardino, who kindly took the time and effort to nominate me for this special effort. Frank works tirelessly as an extraordinary volunteer in Rome, New York. That's where he's from. How many people know there's a Rome, New York? There is. Yeah. And he's improving the lives of hundreds of school children. And he's one of the most exceptional people on the professional volunteers that are part of the advisory council for the New York State Mentoring Program. We thank you, Frank, for your sincere friendship and dedication to enable our youth to have a better future. Keep it up. I recall with fond memory the many invitations as First Lady in Albany for 12 years to visit Seneca Falls and address the important issues concerning women and children. I tell you the truth, I really thought I was like in hallowed ground because this was, I was wondering where did the suffragettes live? They were terrific ladies. We can't forget that. And the advancement of women was always a priority during my husband's tenure. We accomplished new opportunities for women in leadership and many programs to strengthen women, children, and families. And I'm so proud that Andrew, my son, the governor, is continuing his father's legacy with his own effective member leadership. Andrew reaffirms his father's credo that we are the family of New York. That's what we like to say. We have to keep it up. I have always believed that there are three pillars of support for children, the home, the school, and the community. And when one of these supports is not functioning, the child suffers. Again, you know, we started the program in 1983. It worked so well, and we reached thousands of children. And we had the right model, the one-to-one -one trained mentor, mentee. It's still going on. And then it stopped because in 1994, Mario lost the election, it was gone. Now, we come to, uh, actually in 1995, when my son Andrew was working for President Clinton and Secretary of HUD, I don't know how many of you know this, Housing Urban Development Corporation, and he suggested that I quickly start that same metal, again, metal, <laughs> wonderful program again, and actually call it Mentoring USA. And he said, now, Mom, don't be just national, go international. He knows I like to get to Italy to travel. <laughs> well, it is in Italy, by the way, and I do travel to Italy, so it's a, a joy. Now we have an invitation to go to Holland, Ireland. Who wants to come with me? And, and even Germany. So you see, children are children everywhere, folks, all over the world. When they're not doing well in school, families are not functioning well, they're going to be in trouble, and we have to help them as soon as possible. And mentoring works. So again now, in 2015, I heard from the good governor, and he told me that he, he really wanted me to get that program working again because of the statistics he got of failing schools. So we got to work, and we've been recruiting and training volunteers right now. If you know anybody who wants to have, have us a little time, would like to eat just one hour a week, we do a great training, terrific. And it's just for one, one year, and it does so well for children and, and their future. So if anybody is interested, please don't hesitate. I'm going to keep brochures outside for you when you leave. So giving our time to a child really is an investment of a lifetime for the sake of all our children and families. So today, women should feel hope for the future. Women like you right here, our daughters and granddaughters, have choices and abilities that can help heal the world. 
And to build the future, we always have to start where the future starts, always with our children. Change your life and try to become a mentor if you can. I have one final thought I would like to share with you. I owe a debt of gratitude to my loving family, to my late husband, Mario, who was the love of my life, to our children, Margaret and Howard Mayer, and also Andrew and Sandy, Maria and Ken, Madeline and Brian, Christopher and Christina. Christopher can't be here. And my sister Nancy and Bob and all my faithful friends who are here, all of whom have always encouraged me to pursue my passion for helping others. And to my 13 beautiful granddaughters, they are beautiful, in and out. And my one grandson, Mario, and I have now another great grandson, also called Mario. So there you go, just two and a half months ago. And they are all inspirations to me, to my love and hope for the future. Thank you, thank you, thank you all.